Hi everyone, welcome back again to another Flutter tutorial. In this session, we will discuss about how to make a HTTP POST request along with Flutter blog. In the previous article, we were discussing about making a GET request along with blog pattern. Hope you all remember that. If anybody is new to this video, I recommend you to go check that video first. I will also leave the link for the video at the code at the top right. Alright, so it is going to be very simple and we are going to be using the same kind of logic which we used for the GET method. The only change in the uh, API calling alone. Okay, we have the same kind of initial loading loaded and the error states for the blog. So you can see here right over in the screen we have two input fields that is two text form fields and a search button. As soon as you give a value for this field and hit the search button it is going to make a post request and if there is any data present in that then it is going to fetch that data and display them in the UI screens. Okay. The only difference in the get and post is that in post we will be appending the data and say the body parameter that is in the form of JSONs and I will also showing that shortly okay. So we make use of post request generically in order to create or update uh, resources okay. That is the basic definition of our uh, post request. Hope you got a good overview of what we are about to discuss in this video. With this idea let's directly jump into the coding part. To add these dependencies, one is Flutter block as well as HTTP. Since we are going to deal with block pattern as well as HTTP for the post method, we will be using these dependencies. After adding these dependencies, now let's start with the main.dat file. Here in the main.dat file, we have made use of generated routes. You can check it right over here. And inside this class, we have the, the routes defined specifically. And since we are going to have only one page, the initial route points to the my home page. And see the my home page will be having these two text form fields and the search button. I will come back to this later on. First, let us just discuss about the block architecture. For the block, we will be making use of only one block since we are going to deal with only one page right over here. And starting with the states, we have uh, totally four states. So one is the initial and that is the loading which you have the circular progress indicator at the center and next is the loader state where we will be displaying the data in the UI upon successful post request and finally we have the error state okay these are the states and moving on to the events here we have only one event as you might have guessed which is the search event alone okay this, this search button is going to trigger only one event which is send data which we call and it is going to pass the name and the job description okay so this is the only event we have for this app moving on to the block here uh, we have since we have only one event we will be checking for the same event which is send data if the event is so then we will be emitting the loading state for around a period of three seconds after which we will be making a call to the fetch details uh, function which is written on separately inside the repository folder and inside this function we will be passing the name and the job as the parameter and we will be making use of http post uh, in the previous video we will be making use of http.get method here the changes we make use of the post and we will be passing the base url followed by the endpoints the second thing which you need to pay attention is that we have the body parameter right over here which is something we, which we won't have in the get method only for the post we have this body and see the body will be passing the data in the form of json as said before and passing the name which we get as the parameter and the job okay it is done it the corresponding response is stored in the response variable and we'll be checking for the status code of that response if it is 201 that is anything has updated successfully or something has modified then we'll be returning that response body if, um, with the help of from json method available in the model class or else if uh, the status code is anything other than 201 then at that time we'll be throwing the error okay successful data retrieval the date value stored in the data variable which is again an instance of the model class which is the home page model and finally we will be emitting the load state with the parameter which we get as the res result of the api call okay now this is all about the block architecture now let us move on to the ui here in the ui we have the block consumer which wraps the listeners and builders and say the builder we will be checking for the loader state initially if it is so then we will be rendering the loader layout which is written separately over here 
yeah we have the initial loading layout which is responsible for building up these two text form field in the search button and in the load layout we'll be simply making use of a list style with the help of the data which we get as the result of the api call okay and so if it is a loaded state then we'll be rendering the build loader layout with the by passing the data which we get as the result of the api call or else if the state is going to be loading then at that time it will be rendering the circular progress indicator or else if the state is going to be an error state uh, then we will be rendering an error screen which will contain the error text or else if the state is going to be anything which is not included in the above three then we will be rendering the initial layout itself okay this is how we can map the corresponding states to the corresponding layouts well, that's it guys. This is very simple. This is how we can make use of a HTTP POST method with the help of a Flutter block pattern. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do so, consider subscribing and I will see you in the next one. Bye.